Awesome, Kiana, take it away. All right, thank you, Spencer. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right. All right, here we go. So I'm here to present how to develop an effective hiring process. Uh, my name is Kiana. I am a career coach. Um, I am the founder and career coach at Your Key Coach. Um, I started my career in recruiting about eight years ago, right after college. Um, I did land a job at Facebook, and that really jump started my career in recruiting. Um, spent two years there, and then ended up moving to Google, where I focused on tech recruiting, specifically for new grads. Um, so I was targeting software engineers, data scientists, privacy engineers, all of the things. Um, spent two years there and wanted to get out of the big tech space and ended up landing a role at a startup called GoPuff. Um, they are a delivery service um, and spent two and a half years building out their engineering and tech teams. Um, after GoPuff, I realized I did not want to be in an office anymore. I wanted to teach people everything that I've learned from that big tech space and also the startup space in regards to hiring and recruiting. So I launched Your Key Coach. Um, and since my career in recruiting, I've worked with over 50 hiring managers. I've basically learned all of the things in terms of job descriptions from them, how to work with them. Um, I reviewed over 3,000 resumes. I've interviewed over 1,000 candidates. Um, so really just honing in on that recruiting piece during those eight years. Um, so now my mission is to unlock your career potential, whether that's through resume writing, making sure that you have the right keywords, it's drafted correctly, um, making sure that you have those job search strategies as you're using your new resume, prepping you for interviews and salary negotiation. So what exactly is an effective hiring process? So here are five things that we're gonna talk about um, today, starting with defining the role. So what exactly are you hiring for? That's the first thing you wanna figure out as you're drafting a job search and a job description. And why are you hiring? Um, so if you're trying to replace someone, are you expanding your team? Is your team going through some reorgs? Um, and also what qualities should this candidate have? Um, next is a timely process. Um, how soon do you need the role filled? How much time do you want to dedicate to the hiring process? Um, one thing that the big tech companies like Facebook, Meta, Google do, um, they make sure that each certain days are dedicated to interviewing and making those hiring decisions. So time blocks. Um, and then who's going to be involved in the hiring process is another thing. So that leads into that effective decision making piece. Um, what questions are your interviewers going to be asking? How do you differentiate what a good hiring signal is versus a not good, not so good signal? And then also determining, you know, which candidate gets an offer. Let's say you have two great candidates. How do you figure out, okay, we're going to move forward with this one versus the other. Um, next is a competitive offer. Um, you should always assume that a candidate is not just interviewing with you. They probably are interviewing with other people. Um, so you want to make sure that if you do present an offer to them, that they sign. So with that, it's just making sure that you're doing your research. You have the funds to to hire them and have the salaries in place and then also the benefits. Um, and then next, lastly, a clear onboarding strategy. So a lot of people think once a candidate signs an offer that it's done and it's actually not the case. It's actually just the beginning. Um, onboarding is key to making sure that the candidate knows what they're doing, they're successful in the role, um, are they going to stay after 90 days? That first 90 days is crucial. So you just want to make sure that they have the right trainings, they're meeting the right people, and that they're just set up for success. So here are the benefits of an effective hiring process. So starting with the part of improving quality of hires. So as a recruiter, I focus on quality versus quantity. Um, I rather send my hiring manager five great candidates that align with what the hiring manager is looking for 
versus sending them 20 candidates. Yes, there's volume there, but only two of them get through. Um, so I rather spend more time just finding that quality versus that quantity piece. Um, effective hiring processes also enhance the company culture. Um, when you're focusing on quality, you're making sure that the right questions are being asked during that interview process, which leads to the right candidate being selected. Um, it boosts productivity and performance. So when you have the quality of candidates and you're asking those right questions, um, some things to think about is how are they gonna produce or perform in that role? And that is gonna lead to that boost of pro productivity and performance in your company. Um, it saves time and money. Um, have an effective hiring process from the get-go, making sure you know the timeline of events in terms of first round interview, panel, final, um, making sure everyone is on board in terms of those different sequences of events. And then also money, recruiting is expensive. So the faster you can recruit, the faster you can get the person in and not spend as much time recruiting. And then lastly, employer ban employer brand is very important. Um, at Google, we were taught that our candidates are our customers. So we really have to focus on them using the Google product after their experience hiring with us, whether they do get an offer or not. Um, so one thing is, you know, responding at the right time, preparing them correctly. Um, and essentially, people are going to remember how you made them feel. So at Google, we always made every candidate feel important and they're always going to tell their friends and family, you know, hey, I had a good experience at Google. I'm going to keep using the product versus they have a bad experience. They're probably not going to use Google for a minute because it's going to trigger them to remember that time they had a bad experience with the interview process. Um, so things to think about there when you're trying to strengthen your employee brand. So how do you define roles clearly. Um, so things to think about first and foremost when you're drafting your job description is what must the candidate have versus nice to have. So must haves is how are they going to get into the interview process? Like this is the type of candidate I want to interview and that I will see myself hiring. So for example, if you're hiring for a marketing role, if you're looking for a senior candidate, you want them to have at least 10 plus years of experience, right? Now, if you're looking for someone that has the nice to haves, it's let's say you want someone that's 10 plus years of experience, but also has a startup experience because they're gonna be working with startups. Um, so you really wanna make sure that you differentiate what the qualities are versus the like preferred qualifications. Um, next is company values. Um, one thing to think about too is kind of that culture fit interview. Um, Amazon does a good job at this when they are interviewing candidates, they are thinking about trigger words in terms of, did they say things about customer service or anything that aligns with their company goals or values? Um, so that's really a good piece to understand if that candidate is going to be a good fit for the company. Um, another thing is accomplishments. You want to think about what is your team trying to accomplish? Um, what have they accomplished in the last month, the last year, the last quarter? And how can we ask questions to that candidate that lead to those accomplishments of what you want to do in the future? And that kind of ties into the goals too. It's like, what are the team goals for the upcoming year, upcoming quarter, month? Um, you want to make sure you're asking types of questions that kind of signal if they're able to achieve those goals with your team. So here's just an example of hiring stats that I pulled from paraform.com. Um, this is specifically from um, for software engineering roles in the U.S. Um, so average time to fill. Um, this is in regards to when the job is posted by the hiring manager to the time an offer is accepted. So we're looking at 41 days right now, and this is gonna depend on level as well. Um, I believe this is regarding mid-level software engineers, but the time to fill could be longer uh, for senior and above and lower for your new grads. Um, recruitment process, that refers to the time a recruiter is headhunting for a new candidate. Um, and speaking to candidates, trying to get them into the hiring process to the time a candidate accepts an offer. We're at 35 days. 
And then the length of interview process that is from the day the candidate interviews to the day that they sign an offer is 22 days. So how to assess candidates. So here are some things to think about um, asking those targeted questions. So typically those bigger tech companies, they will have panel interviews and they are focused on these four points. So role related knowledge, what are the tools does the candidate know? Do they actually know how to do their job? Um, problem solving and behavioral, those kind of go hand in hand. Essentially, those questions don't may not have a right or wrong answer, but they do have just you just trying to figure out how they're thinking, how they would how they would be in different scenarios, whether it's challenging or wins. Um, and then culture fit is about, again, like I mentioned, the Amazon interviews, making sure that candidates align to the company culture, mission statement, values, things of that nature. And then interview training, um, this is more tailored to the actual interviewers. So as a hiring manager, you want to make sure that whoever you're picking to interview candidates, they go through some type of interview training. Um, when I was working at GoPuff, I was actually leading those interview trainings for anyone that wanted to be involved in the interview process. And I called it interview etiquette 101 because I think with Zoom meetings and especially for people in tech, and I guess in other roles too, you know, interviewing is not your full-time job. It is, you know, part of your job. So from going to like a heated meeting to an interview, it's like, how do you switch your brain on and off from that? Um, how do you turn off notifications so that the candidate has your full attention? Um, I have seen interview feedback from my candidates. They will, like one candidate called me right after their interview and they said they didn't feel good about it. They might've not gotten the great feedback because they felt like their interviewer wasn't paying attention. Um, so that will impact the hiring process and that will not make it effective. So just make sure your interviewers know what they're doing. Um, hiring ratings, how are you defining who gets through versus not? And then diverse perspectives. It is very crucial to have a diverse interview panel. Um, for example, if a candidate just sees, if they don't see someone that looks like them or they just see like all men or all women, um, they can definitely see that as, okay, maybe this company is lacking diversity. And it goes back to the piece that candidates are usually interviewing with multiple companies. So if diversity is top of mind for them, you need to think about that as you're interviewing them and putting them through the process. And then also inputting feedback, making sure that there's guidelines in terms of that, where it's like you need to write full on feedback or whether it's ratings, whatever it is, just making sure that in the feedback is impactful. And lastly, debrief meetings. I know the bigger tech companies do this. Um, at GoPuff, I implemented this because it was just the hiring manager making the decision. But I think debrief meetings are productive. It gives an overall impression of the candidate. It does it just trigger a lot of just letting people know that their voice is heard. Um, and also just reading feedback versus someone actually telling you the feedback could be two different things. Um, and then also this kind of goes into employee engagement. Um, when employees feel heard, they wanna stay. Um, so that can definitely lead to that when you're hosting those debrief meetings. And then also just talking about interview process improvement and just making sure that you're doing pulse checks in regards to if the hiring process is good, should we tweak things? Should we take these questions out? Should we add some? Things of that nature. So to wrap things up, here are just some, some quick takeaways. Um, again, defining the role and responsibilities, um, just making sure that you have a clean cut job description, that it's clear, you know what you're hiring for, and then also a structured interview process. You should know ahead of time before you post the role, how many interviews are gonna take place, who's gonna be in the interview process, how what uh, by what time you wanna hire this person. Um, and then also effective interview techniques. So just making sure that everyone is aware of the questions they're asking, what their interview topics are, um, collaborative decision-making. So again, with those debrief meetings, just making sure everyone feels heard, making sure that everyone is on the same page and supports that hire. And then also just continuing to improve the interview process since 
interviewing and hiring is constantly changing. So you want to just make sure that you do pulse checks every now and then. All right, and that is it. Open to some questions. Here's my contact info if you would like to chat further, um, but would love to answer some questions or thoughts. Thanks, Kiana. This was great. Um, I put a question in there just that was on my mind, but it doesn't have to be the first one. So if someone wants to come off mute, raise their hand however you want. You can just let it sit here for a second until someone says, pick me. Okay. Yeah, no, I had a couple of questions. Um, yeah. If you don't mind, and thanks for sharing about this. Uh, one question mm -hmm. was more from the other side, just because you've had so much experience interviewing people. Um, do you have any like tips or suggestions that if any of us are interviewing somewhere else in the future, like what have you seen that really helps you stand out or or just look better in an interview? Yeah, um, and, that's a really uh, good question. Yeah, and then uh, one oh. other little question after, sorry. <laughs> oh, no worries, yeah, so interviewing, so a lot of people don't like interviewing because I think, you know, it's really just a person asking you questions and they're like judging you, whatever the case is. But I really tell all my clients and all my friends that are going through interview processes that interviewing should feel like a conversation um, if you feel like you're getting attacked with questions, then that might not be like a good fit. Um, I think a lot of companies are trying to understand more like what candidates are looking for. Like I mentioned before, candidates are constantly interviewing with other companies. So companies are trying to stand up in that stand out in that regard. Um, so I just tell folks, you know, be yourself, you know what you do, be able to just talk about everything that you've done, whether it's things that you've accomplished, challenges. Um, I've even seen interview feedback where they really liked the candidate's personality and they moved them forward, even though they didn't have all the right answers versus I've seen interview feedback where this candidate hit all my answers, but I didn't like talking to them. They felt like a robot or they just didn't have a personality, like do not move forward. So it's really 50% personality and 50% what you know. So just be yourself and treat it like a conversation at the end of the day. Awesome. Thank you. That's really helpful. Um, the other question I had was from the other side. So if we are hiring, I'm curious if you have thoughts about like test, uh, test tasks or activities, you know, sometimes you can say, this is the type of work you'll be doing. Can you complete this? Is that something that you would recommend? Does that usually work well? Why or why not? So oh. I think it does work well, but I will tell, I will say from a candidate perspective, like with the clients I'm working with, if they see that there's a writing test or a writing assignment, they'll most likely not want to go through the interview because they're like, well, there's other companies that don't offer this and I can just get through it. Um, and then another thing too, just with all the AI stuff happening, a lot of these writing assignments are, you know, clients or candidates are using AI to complete these assignments for them. So I think it is best to do a live assignment or a live coding challenge versus a take home because we want to see them think in live, right? Not when they're using AI. Um, so I think there's just pros and cons to it. But overall, I think that if you need to assess a candidate that way and you're seeing that it's working, then hey, use it. Great. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Kiana, Good what question. are the biggest mistakes what are the biggest mistakes you see in the hiring process uh, by employers? And do you have suggested tips or tricks on avoiding those mistakes? Yes. So some mistakes that come to mind, I would say the number one mistake is not knowing what you want. I think when hiring managers are told they need to hire I think they just feel the pressure from on top to get this person in the seat. Um, so they're really just focusing on, you know, let's just get this person in the seat. And then you hire someone and they end up leaving or they're not even, you know, cut for the cut out for the job. So they're really just focused on that time piece of trying to beat the clock. But I think at the end of the day, it's that quality piece, right? You need to know what you want. You want to sit down and make sure that you know what's on the job descriptions, what you what qualities you're looking for. 
Um, so I think it's really just focusing on the role and what the role really is versus just getting that butt in seat. Um, and then another thing too is just not having structure. Um, a lot of people are getting ghosted nowadays. A lot of people are not hearing back. People are going through 10, like five to six, seven, eight rounds of interviews and then ghosted. Um, again, that impacts candidate experience. And like I mentioned before, you got to treat your candidates like they're, they're your customers. You want them to continue to use your product. So just having those clear guidelines in terms of responding, giving them updates, whether it's a rejection or not, just giving them something. Like at Google, we had a no update update calendar block every Friday. So if we didn't have a specific update for a candidate, we still checked in with them, say, hey, we don't we didn't forget about you. Like we are still in the process of making decisions or whatever the case is. A couple of questions in the chat uh, from Chad. How many interviews is too many? Good question. I think to me, five is the top. Like that should be the cutoff because it's recruiter screen, first round, three, three or four panels, and then you should be able to make a decision. So I would say three to five. I think after five, I think that's just dragging it. I think after the third interview, you should know if you want to hire this person or not. Um, but after five, I think it's it's too much. And then follow up from Chad, recommendations for hiring other than full-time roles, part-time fractional contract, any tips on that? Yeah, so for full-time, definitely spend more time hiring there. So I would say the full five rounds of interviews for a full-time person, just because that is an investment. Um, well, all stages or all levels are, but I think with full time, again, you want them to stay versus contract, I would say two to three interviews. Um, and then if they are going into conversion, so then that could be another one or two. Um, but part time, again, one or two, but I would say if you want someone full time, definitely spend time interviewing them. Um, from Nate Jones. <clears throat> There are some emerging real-time AI interview tools. Have you encountered these? Thoughts on how this might change virtual interviews? So I haven't encountered like the, a, actually, no, that's not true. One of my candidates actually told me, or one of my clients, excuse me, she told me that one of her first round interviews was through AI. So it wasn't an actual person. It was like a prompt talking to her and she had to record her responses. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, Another thing too is that a lot of companies are using those AI um, ATS or applicant tracking systems. So to filter out the applicants, they are using AI to see what keywords are on the job or on their resume that match the job description. So I do recommend having different versions of your resume, making sure that you do have the keywords that are listed on the job description, um, because a lot of companies are using that tool to save time on hiring. Um, so if you get an automatic rejection, that may be the case that they are using that AI tool. Interesting. Just anecdotally, I've heard of uh, folks using AI to help them, the the candidate, to help the candidate better answer questions real time uh, huh? based on what they prompt the, the AI with about the company, which I think is actually pretty that's cool. interesting yeah what is strike back um right this, this is a cool question from lauren wilson if you had to choose one unexpected skill that most people overlook when defining roles what would it be and why oh that's a good question <sighs> overlooked skill um, I would say it kind of goes in hand with like the personality piece, especially in tech and engineering roles. Um, I would say those roles, like I've seen in the past and most recently too, that a lot of companies are looking for people that can code, but also can you talk to people because you're going to be handling stakeholder management, you're going to be having to present different projects. So I think that piece, especially for software engineers, is something that that's, we're starting to see more. Because um, I think back before the pandemic, it was mostly like, who can code the best? Or is your code clean? But it's like, can you talk about your code? Um, so I think that just having good communication and being able to sell yourself in that way is 
an overlooked skill. Nice. Uh, David Baker says cover letters. Do hiring managers read them? Should we expect applicants to provide them or are they a waste of time? I would say if the job description says you must upload a cover letter, do it. And then if it doesn't say it, don't upload one. So <laughs> because honestly, that it's optional, but it's not required. Yeah, I would say no, unless I would say if you really, really want that role and you want to add more time for yourself to make a cover letter, do it. But if you're like, oh, if I get this interview or not, I wouldn't add that cover letter. Um. Let's see, from Andrew Hill, first thank you. And then how can we ensure that the interview process also identifies a learning fit? Mm, learning fit. Can you kind of expand on learning fit? What do you mean by that? Yeah, Andrew, do you want to come off mute? Maybe. Like I'm thinking like learning in terms of like a new grad, like willing to grow or I don't know. like in what? Maybe we'll come back to that one. So I had one, okay. so we'll go to, go to mine. So hypothetical, okay. how, do you, how do you assess or handle when a candidate is, is using this round of interviews and maybe we're to the point of like making an offer as leverage at a current job or pursuing another opportunity? Hmm. That's a good one because I had that happen all the time at GoPuff because what we were doing at the time, we were giving out all these big offers because we wanted to get people in, but in seat basically, but we wanted like a solid engineering team. We just needed them in. So we were going way outside of the market in terms of salary. So that was one thing we started asking more questions about what they were doing in terms of other interviews. Um, we also incorporated this whole, you need to sign this offer within 48 hours. We've also said, we're not presenting you an offer unless we know you're going to sign. So we were using different tactics and different verbiage, but overall, I think just setting that tone from the beginning as a recruiter, that's the recruiter's responsibility to check in every step of the way to see where they're at with their other companies. Um, are they you know, what do they actually like about the role that they're interviewing for with you? Um, so really just checking in every step of the way. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Final call for questions. This is, this has been great. I've learned a lot. Yay. This is awesome. So you've told us how people can reach out to you. Um, Looks like you're also uh, posting on on socials. That's cool. Um, what are what are you looking for? We don't. This isn't a question I usually ask, but what's a what's an ideal client for you right now? Yeah, I like people that have been at their jobs for a while and they're just ready to make a move, but they don't know how. Um, so, like right now, I have a lot of people that have been in their roles for seven to. 10 to 12 years and they're kind of lost in terms of interviewing or they don't know what a resume should look like now versus 10 years ago. Um, so really just guiding them through what the market looks like now. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, this is our, this is about our typical endpoint. So thanks everyone for coming out and um, thanks again, Kiana, this has been informative. It was great meeting you all. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you, Kiana. Appreciate Tell it. Tell your friends, follow Mid to Connect on the socials too, and we'll see you all next week, same time. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks.